welcome back to Inside History. I'm Susanna McClellan, and today we have a very special show for you. We are back again at the 1916 Courthouse and the newly constructed museum. And we're talking with Steve Erdman, who is the curator of collections and exhibits. We're so happy to have you, Steve. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Welcome to the Miles and Shirley Fetterman Temporary Gallery. Temporary Gallery. This is so exciting. We're going to show you all some exciting footage of what's going on in here. Tell us, why would people want to come to this museum today, Steve? Because we have numerous things on display to see that tells the story of Palm Beach County's history. But the uh, Historical Society of Palm Beach County has been collecting since 1937, so we have probably ten times as many artifacts in our collections as we have on display. The temporary gallery gives us a venue where we can tell the numerous stories that aren't in the permanent exhibits. Um, in this room, what we're going to do is have biannual shows. These will be every six months. The show will be up for five months and it will give us 30 days to take it down and put up the next show. In the future, we're planning an exhibit on the 80th anniversary of the hurricane of, 19, of 1928. Oh, nice. um, we're planning a full year of two exhibits on the centennial of Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. We're looking at future shows on the Civil Air Patrol, which we did a, a movie that has been shown on a couple of stations now. Um, Men at War, Palm Beach County during World War II. Mm -hmm. So we're looking out about three to four years right now in these six-month segments. Oh, it's so exciting. So what's, uh, what's the show that we might see here right now, today? Well, the, first exhibit in the temporary gallery is called Early Contact. And what a lot of people don't realize, and I've heard many people say that this area doesn't have a long history, but in fact it has a very long history. And people have been in the Florida Peninsula for over 10,000 years. Um, one of the things we have on display in the permanent galleries is a 3,000 year old spear point. But people inhabited the coastline for several thousand years and the people that inhabited the coastline of Palm Beach County were known as the Yega. And so we have this period of time in the early 1500s where the Spanish were exploring the coast and they discovered Florida, the area that had been inhabited for several thousand years. And this story is told in this temporary exhibit, this early period of time where it's the first chronicles of the county, the first written history of the county. Wonderful. And, you know, we don't know much about these people that lived here except for these written documents, mm -hmm. the ship's logs. Mm -hmm. There was a Quaker that was shipwrecked here in 1696, and he published a journal of staying in this area for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But archaeology is our other window into learning about the people that were here. Right. And, you know, I had never heard of the Yega until you were telling me about it earlier. I'm just familiar with the Seminoles. The, the Yega, as I said, lived here for several thousand years. Mm -hmm. They probably were at the height of their population for the last thousand years. Um, the village of Hobe, which is where Du Bois Mound is now, near the Jupiter Inlet, mm -hmm. probably was a village of about 500 when mm -hmm. Juan Ponce de Leon sailed down the coast. And the probability is, in, from his ship's journals that he sailed into that inlet and oh. met with those people. Interesting. Um, he probably wasn't the first Spaniard here, although he's credited with that. And he's the first Spaniard who had a charter from the King of Spain. So there were probably unauthorized Spaniards that sailed the coast in that period after Columbus for several years mm -hmm. because the Aga seemed to know a few words of Spanish really? and were already hostile to the Spanish. Oh. That's interesting. That's wonderful. Now you have another part of the museum. It's an interactive part of the museum. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, in the place gallery, which the museum has divided the permanent galleries into the people of Palm Beach County and the place itself that these historical events took place. And in the place gallery, we have several interactives that allow the visitor to use a touch screen and explore Palm Beach County. For example, we're talking here about the length of time that Palm Beach County's been here, but looking over the last hundred years, Palm Beach County has grown exponentially. Yes. And so we have an, an interactive exhibit that lets you add map layers and see the county population growth, the growth of the road systems, the growth of the canal systems through the county, and also has a couple of animations on it where you can look at 
what the peninsula was like five million years ago and look at its formation ecologically over the last thousand years. That's really, really neat. Uh, another interactive lets you explore the ecological zones. And there's six ecological zones, and you can pick Lake Okeechobee, for example, mm -hmm. and then explore that. Look at the animals that are there, look at the bird life that are there, choose a um, touchscreen command that lets you look at human impact that's happened to these areas. Mm -hmm. um, while it's only a screen, and above it is a 30 inch monitor so many people can watch it at the same time. There's several hundred pages of actually of information that are there. So that is fantastic. Is it is it kid friendly? Do, do you it's get very kid friendly. Oh that's it's excellent. Very kid friendly. Yeah. Um, we actually have a stool over there that's for the docents sometimes, but I've seen numerous children pull up one of those stools and spend 10 or 15 minutes playing with the interactive. Oh really? Yeah. That's the kind of thing that, that really makes history come alive. Yes. Why, uh, why should people study history, in your, your opinion, Steve? So that they don't repeat mistakes that have happened in the past, <laughs> is the obvious answer to me. I think somebody said that before. Yes, I think so. <laughs> um, again, as I, I pointed out earlier, I, people don't seem to feel this county has that much history. Yes, I it, feel the same does. way. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting with the ancient here, but the rest of the museum picks up with the pioneers and settlers in the 1880s and follows their stories, mm -hmm. and we learn the context of how life developed in this county. Yes, there's just so many stories, too, and so many more exhibits that you're going to show that relate to those right, stories. Right, we have an endless number of choices in the temporary gallery to continue this explanation of the county. Mm -hmm. Also, I would like to add that the temporary exhibit is open to proposals from outside cultural institutions. Oh, really? So not all exhibits are going to be developed in-house. Okay. So, for example, we have a small museum, St. Michael's Museum. Not many people know about that. It's near the Greek Orthodox Church oh. over on Southern, and they have a very large Spanish galleon collection. Oh, really? And they're putting together a proposal right now oh, my to goodness. show their material in the temporary gallery. Now, you've got Spanish galleon stuff in here, too, right now, don't you? We have some Spanish galleon material that was borrowed from uh, Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society in um, Key West. Mm -hmm. And in looking at, you know, the technology of the Yega, we have a canoe on display here, and we have a spear point that was used to catch fish mm -hmm. on one of the walls here. But the Spanish got here, and they had iron technology. I mean, on one hand, we have people in dugout canoes. And on the other hand, we have right. Spanish galleons with high-masted sails mm -hmm. showing up, cannons, and you know, we have cannonballs on display. Oh, we neat. have cargo hooks and ax heads oh, wow. and things like that, that people can see the differences in technology right. between these two groups. Right, right. Um, well, what, and you were telling me about the bones. There's some animal bones in here that have to do with the Yega. I love yes, that. Yes, from the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville, we borrowed several bones that are from Du Bois Shell Mound in Jupiter. And again, we don't know much about the Yega, but what we can learn from archaeology, bones that were in their refuge pile, tell us about the diet and what kind of animals they ate. Right. So we have deer and raccoon and jackfish and sharks and you know you get a window into who these people were right and they died out right there are no more yega the, the yega were gone completely within 250 years of spanish discovery of florida mm -hmm. they some were taken as slaves some died in warfare with the mm -hmm. spanish but the vast majority died from european diseases mm -hmm. um, we have sort of a double whammy here. We have iron technology versus wood and bone. We also have no immunity to a disease such as smallpox. Right, right. That is, I love the, the sort of dichotomy of cultures there. That's great. And then how about sort of moving into, you know, 19th century and 20th century stuff? Do you have any kind of exhibits coming up that are going to be talking about the early days of Palm Beach, the Flagler years, the Meisner years, stuff like that? Well, Pretty much Flagler went to leave the Flagler Museum. <laughs> okay. But as far as the early days during the centennial, one of the exhibits that we have on the beginnings of Palm Beach County history, um, in this gallery, the east side of the gallery will be Clematis Street, 1909, including mm -hmm. a wood sidewalk and mercantile shop. Neat. And the west side of the gallery 
will be Lake Okeechobee 1909. At that time, the catfishing industry, which brought in nearly a million dollars a year in revenue to fishermen out there. Wow, catfish. 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 They barreled up catfish out there and shipped it out by rail. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Who would have thought? And places like St. Louis, Missouri were large consumers of catfish from Lake Okeechobee at that time. Isn't that fascinating? See, that's the kind of thing you learn at, at this museum, right? That's the kind of thing you learn <laughs> when you learn the history of where you are. That's yes. right. Are there any special things in here that, that, that you have a special interest in, any special artifacts that you, you have a real interest in sharing with everybody? Um, this painting, for example? The painting is, is a, an example of a piece in here that has a history all of its own. Uh, this painting was originally done for the Winter Club, which is in uh, the village of North Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. um, it was painted and hung on the wall, and in the 40s, was, that was approximately 1926. It has severe cracking from surviving the hurricane of 1928. When they renovated the Winter Club in the 40s, they built a false wall because they didn't seem to know what to do with the painting hmm. at the time. It's almost 12 feet long. And it sat encased in a false wall for 40 years, forgotten by other people. Um, when they went to tear the Winter Club down in 1985, luckily the wrecking ball didn't go through it. They tore down the false wall, found it. Uh -huh. The village of uh, North Palm Beach donated it. Um, it made some twists and turns along the way, but eventually wound up purchased by the production company of Burt Reynolds, and it's on loan to us. Oh, right how now. it's huge! It's I mean, it's huge. very rare to find it's something huge, like that. And it was heavy to hang. Really? It took four of us to put it up there. Really? Really. Uh, this model of a Spanish galleon here is just representative of a Spanish galleon, but mm -hmm. it's actually a model of Columbus's ship, the Nina. Okay. And it was commissioned by Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville uh, as part of the celebration of the quincentennial of Columbus's discovery. Uh, it took six months to build and is completely accurate based on the drawings of the ship in Spain, Spanish archives. Really? That's really neat looking. I think the kids are going to really like That's that. That's a beautiful piece. Tell us, Steve, about um, you know how you got this museum put together. How long did it take you to get it all organized and set it up? And who did you use? Because it's a beautiful museum. It really is. It's gorgeous. Well, the museum was a you know almost five years of time in planning and preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, Gallagher and Associates, with their, which are in Bethesda, Maryland, were the design company that were commissioned to do the design of the museum. Exhibit Concepts is a fabrication company and they're in Dayton, Ohio, were brought in to build the backdrops and the platforms and you know many of the things that artifacts are mounted in. Well Steve, we have so enjoyed having you on this show. It has been a real pleasure and a real honor to have you here in Palm Beach, in West Palm Beach, opening this wonderful museum. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your time. We'll be back after a few minutes. Hello, I'm Douglas Lee, president of Stetson University. You've heard about scam artists who target Florida seniors. Here is some advice to protect yourself. Use caution when giving out personal information. Keep important papers in a safe place. Shred documents, especially free credit card offers. And remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. For more information, visit the Elder Consumer Protection Project at Stetson University College of Law. Welcome back to the 1916 Courthouse. We're here with Inside History talking to Tony Marconi, who is the curator of education here at the museum. Tony, thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks. <laughs> Great. Well, we've just been taking a tour of this magnificent new museum. We see lots of exciting things in here to look at. So, Tony, where are we standing now in this museum? Okay, right now we're, we're in what we call the People Gallery. And people it's about gallery. the people of Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. and we've taken some people that have impacted our history in some way, mm -hmm. you know, both alive, some of them are alive still, and, and both that have passed away mm -hmm. a long time ago. Uh, right over here we have the uh, healers, you know, the medical people that, that had an okay. impact. 
Uh, we have Law and Politics, which is right behind you. And, With the Ashley Gang. Oh, yeah, Ashley Gang. And that infamous voting booth from the, the presidential election of 2000. Oh, the voting yes, booth? Yes, yes, the booth with the butterfly ballot. No, yes, the one we that have caused that. all the controversy. Yes, absolutely. What are, what's another sort of significant thing that you think is in here? Uh, well, we have uh, a spear point that was found out in uh, Lake Okeechobee last year. It's made of coral. Ooh. It comes from the Tampa Bay area. It's about 3,000 years old. And what's important about that is it shows trade. Oh. You know, between the, the, the different groups of Indians. Mm -hmm. Because that was not but Indians found on the here. West Coast? That's right, up in the okay. Tampa Bay area, coming down into the interior of Palm Beach County around Lake Okeechobee. So it gives you some insight into Indian trade and Absolutely. what they were all about? Absolutely. Okay. Some other real cool things is yeah. uh, one of my favorites is the shotgun. Oh. That belonged to John Ashley of the Ashley Gang. Ashley Gang? Absolutely. Here That's, in Florida. Yeah, there was a gang uh, in the 1910s to the 1920s. This gang you know, ravaged southeast Florida, robbing, killing, uh, running liquor and stuff. Uh, one of our sheriffs, Bob Baker, was really after the Ashley gang. Really? He wanted to get them. Yeah, they were pretty bad people. John Ashley had been caught a few times, but has escaped. And there had been shootouts and stuff during his escapes and all. And he had found out that uh, John Ashley and some of his gang was going to be up in the Sebastian area. So, of course, that's out of his jurisdiction. So he contacted the sheriff up there. Uh -huh. So they set a trap to capture him. Oh, really? And when he was crossing a bridge at night, they had put up a chain so he couldn't get through across uh -huh. the bridge. And when he stopped, you know, the lawman jumped out and, and captured him. But something went wrong, and John Ashley and the three guys that were with him were all killed. Oh, wow, you know, now, tragedy. Yeah, and what was interesting is John Ashley had a glass eye because he Ooh. had got his eye uh, shot out in a, in a shootout. Uh -huh. And so Bob Baker always swore that he would have that glass eye as a watch fob. Ew. Yeah, I like that. It's <laughs> That's kinda, a good story. Kids cool will story. like that story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, another another interesting item is the computer, the personal computer that we have. Okay. Uh, although it's not from 1980, it was shortly thereafter. Uh, IBM was in Boca Raton, and in 1980 they developed the first personal computer, mm -hmm. which is very significant. You know, not only nationwide because com personal computers are commonplace today, but not in 1980. Mm -hmm. So it was really neat that we do have one. That just a couple of years after that. So we have that on display to show that, you know, the, the industry at that time that was here in Palm because Beach County. Because what IBM came into uh, South Florida here in the 70s, is that right? Yeah, something like mm -hmm. that. You know, a lot of jobs to the area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they put a lot of effort into developing this personal computer, mm -hmm. which is, was really cool. Uh, we also have in our other gallery, the, the Places Gallery, okay. we have a, a display on the Barefoot Mailman. Barefoot Mailman? Yeah. What's yeah. that about? The Barefoot Mailman. Well, during the pioneer era, uh, about 1873 to about 1893 was the, the, what we call the pioneer era of Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to get mail to wherever it needed to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just like today. Today you can go to the mailbox, drop it in, or, or go walk to the post office, give it to them, and poof, next day it can be just about anywhere. Right. Well, back then they had a lot of problems getting mail in and getting mail out. The locals here wrote the post office in Washington, D.C. to get approval to, to establish what they called the Star Route, is what the name of the route was. They would walk along the beach from here all the way to Miami and back. Mm -hmm. And they would walk along the water line on the beach where the sand was the hardest mm -hmm. in their bare feet. Oh. They'd sling their, their shoes over their shoulder. Wow. And uh, walk. And they would spend their first night, they'd leave on Monday, spend their first night in Delray Beach at the Orange Grove House of Refuge. Mm -hmm. Then they'd walk to the New River area, the House of Refuge there, which is Fort Lauderdale. Okay. And then on Wednesday, they'd complete their trip and arrive in Miami late in the day. And then on Thursday, they'd turn around and come back and get here on Saturday. And they did this for $600 a year. Wow. Could you imagine doing that today? No. For $600 no. a year? No, I don't think so. <laughs> That's sort of like a Pony Express mm -hmm. in yes, Florida. Yes, absolutely. You know, and the, the Pony Express, of course, was a much longer distance, but it didn't last as long mm -hmm. as what the Barefoot Mailman did. You know, and we had one, uh, one incident that was very unfortunate. Uh, 1887, uh, one of our Barefoot Mailmen, Ed Hamilton, died in the line of duty. 
Oh. As he was on his way down to Miami, he got to the Hillsboro Inlet, found that his boat had been used because it was on the south side of the inlet. Mm -hmm. So he had to swim across the inlet to get his boat. Mm -hmm. So he took his clothes off and hung them in a tree, took his mailbag, hung oh. it in a tree, and off he went. Well, a few days later when he didn't arrive, they started searching for him. Uh -huh. And they found the boat still on the south side, and they found his clothes and the mailbag on the north side hanging in a tree, but no Ed Hamilton. Oh. So they think he either drowned and was swept out to sea, oh. or a shark or an alligator. Oh. Uh, had got it. Oh no, an yeah. alligator. Oh, that's such a Florida story of its yeah. own, isn't it? Y yes, it is. And how about um, the name game? There's, a, there's a, an interactive thing in here called the name game, and you can find out a little bit about why everything is named what it is. Lake Worth's named this, Singer Island's named that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Tell it's, us about it's, some of those names. The exhibit is called What's in a Name. Okay. And we've selected 10 different places throughout the county. Uh, you know, how to get their name. You know, I'm, I'm curious, you know, how did like Lake Worth get its name. How did Lake Worth get its well, name? Well, it got its name after the last commander of U.S. troops in Florida during the Second Seminole War. His name was Colonel William Jenkins Worth. He was the last commander and he actually brought the war to a close in 1842. Oh. And so uh, the lake that we know as Lake Worth today was named after him. Okay, also Worth, Worth Avenue after him too? Well, I'm not sure about Worth Avenue, oh, okay. but I know for a fact uh, Lake Worth mm -hmm. and Fort Worth, Texas oh. was also named for him because after he served here, he was a colonel, mm -hmm. he got promoted to Brigadier General, then he went out west, participated in the Mexican-American War a couple okay. years later. Mm -hmm. uh, he was stationed at a uh, uh, place called Fort Worth, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, he was promoted to Major General and unfortunately died of cholera. Oh. while there. Oh. He was in command of a, a military department out there okay. and died of cholera. Okay, let's do the name game again. Okay. How about Singer Island? Singer Island. Well, Singer Island is named for Paris Singer, who is uh, the heir to... Sewing machine. Absolutely. To the Singer sewing machine fortune. Oh. That is right. Okay. Uh, he came down here to winter. Mm -hmm. uh, was going to build a hotel on, on Singer Island, but... Uh, uh, did start building the hotel, but when the land boom collapsed, that went by its wayside. Mm -hmm. People called it Singer's Folly, oh. but the uh, island is named for him. Mm -hmm. But he's also important is in, the, in that he brought one of our famous architects to this area, Addison Meisner. The Addison Meisner? The Addison the Meisner, yep. Yeah, he, uh, he was ill, so Paris invited him to come down here to convalescent and get better, and while he was here, he asked him to do a design for his house, and so he did that, and then they said, well, hey, I want to I want to open up this hospital for shell-shocked soldiers, officers from World War One, because World War One was going on at the time. So Meisner designed uh, and started building this building that was going to be a hospital. It was on Worth Avenue. Okay. Uh, the war ended before the hospital was completed. Right. So Paris Singer converted into a club, and today that club is the Everglades Club. Oh. Addison Meisner had designed that, okay. and Addison Meisner's career here then just took off. Took off brought uh, Spanish Mediterranean architecture mm -hmm. to our area, which is still very prevalent today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have something else in that exhibit, something related to Mr. Meisner. What is that special thing? Oh, his, he had a friend, a real special friend. His name was Johnny Brown. We have his hat, and it's on display in what we call Meisner's workshop. It displays a bunch of artifacts and stuff that his workshop had created to put in all these great estates that he had he designed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Johnny Brown died about 1927, and Johnny Brown is buried on Via Meisner, which is just off Worth Avenue, right at the base of of Meisner's apartment. Right. And Johnny Brown was a spider monkey. A spider monkey? Yeah, since, since Meisner was a, a child, he always liked animals and always had a monkey. Oh, and really? So we have on display Johnny Brown's hat. The little hat of the monkey. Yes, little brown hat. That's a cute the, thing the, to have. People yeah. love to hear that story. Yeah. And, and on his tombstone, there on Via Meisner, it says Johnny Brown the human monkey. Oh, my goodness. So a lot of stuff on Meisner. Now, there's something else, too, that's related to the Bradley Beach Club. Yes, Bradley Beach Club. Okay, tell us about that. Well, Edward R. Bradley uh, came here in the 1890s, opened up a, a gambling joint. Oh, you mean gambling's been in Florida for a long time? Oh, yeah, it's been here a long time. Okay. Called it 
Beach Club, mm -hmm. and it was located in Palm Beach, just on the uh, north side of the North Bridge when you go right into Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the roulette table Ooh. that was in there. Okay. Uh, we have uh, the rules and regulations okay. for the club. We have some poker chips. Mm -hmm. We have some dice mm -hmm. uh, and some cards. Okay. All from the club. And that closed in the, in the 1940s. Okay. And then when he died shortly thereafter, uh, the land was deeded to the town of Palm Beach for a park. And so his establishment was, was uh, removed. Mm -hmm. And the park we have today is, is that legacy. And it's mm -hmm. called Bradley Park. Right, Bradley Park. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, and only, the only people that could be members of this club were out of towners. Oh. Residents were not allowed. What was wrong with residents? Well, because well, he had gambling <laughs> going on in there, so he didn't want the residents to, to, to be involved right. and to know exactly what was going on and stuff, to mm -hmm. be members. So it was only out-of-towners that were allowed to be members. Right, right, right. And uh, what, are, what are some other things that we can see in here at this wonderful museum that are so exciting? Uh, we got the interactive museum. The, the interactives? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great uh, thing for kids to do. Oh, absolutely. With. There's this Watch Palm Beach County Grow. Okay. You know, great interactive dealing with maps, and you can mm -hmm. see the population, you the roadways. You touch it, and it shows. Oh, it's all touch. you got a monitor down here with a large screen up mm -hmm. above, mm -hmm. and you just touch it, mm -hmm. and, and some amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. Do you all work with the local schools? Are you involved with, uh, with local education? Oh, oh, yes, we are. We are now available for school tours. Oh, excellent. So schools, we've just had our first two schools come through. Oh, really? Uh, a public school and a private school, and we have more uh, public schools scheduled for later this month and next month. Excellent. Um, I think this is an excellent place to bring kids. Oh, it is. And oh, yeah, and they've had a lot of fun, learned a lot about where they live. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. also do adult tours. Okay. You know, groups. And you have what? Twenty-three docents. You've yes, got a we lot have we have twenty-three people. docents. Mm -hmm. um, we are starting another class of docents mm -hmm. uh, very shortly. Okay. You know, and this will continue on. Mm -hmm. You know, because we we're going to always need more docents because mm -hmm. you have some that are down here just like some of our snowbirds. You yeah. know, and they go away, you know, for the summer and mm -hmm. then they come back. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, have to have a good mix of docents and our regular mm -hmm. volunteers that do other things for us. And you've got a gift shop, don't you? Yes, we do. We've got a great gift shop. Tell me about the gift shop. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in it that deals with Florida. Okay. Uh, we have books. Books. We've got stuff from local artists. Okay. Great. Uh, in there, uh, we have a reproduction of our human effigy of what it look, would have looked like complete. Neat. That's for sale in there. Neat. Uh, and a lot of other cool stuff. And, and books dealing with strictly uh, Palm Beach County. Historical issues related to Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. Well, we love that. Yeah, so. And we have so loved talking to you, Tony. Great. I'm, I love doing it. Well, we love people like you. You keep history alive. Oh, and that's thank you. what this show is all about. And there's so much history in here in Palm Beach County oh, there to talk is. about. The stories are just going to keep coming and coming and coming. Mm -hmm. We rely on educators like you to get that story out. And we're just go wonderful. This is a beautiful museum. We're just, we're so thrilled. Great. Glad you like it. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's been another segment of Inside History. I'm Susanna McClellan. We'll see you again next time.